Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMadeVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you how you can get your Xbox One controllers working wirelessly with the Nintendo Switch. So as you can see here, no cables, no cables. Now if you look closely you will see that this is actually the original Xbox One controller, it's not the one with Bluetooth. So if we can get this to work it means we can also get the Elite controller to work and that's what I'm going to be showing in this video. Now obviously this does not work natively with the Nintendo Switch, we need an adapter and you might be able to tell that we've got something sticking up here. That is the actual adapter that's communicating with the Nintendo Switch. It uses the battery compartment at the back here and it is also a rechargeable battery. So what you do is charge this up and then this has 800 milliamp hours in it so you're going to get they reckon about four hours life out of it and then when it dies you just plug it in charge it up again you can play and charge at the same time and then when it's charged unplug it you're going to get another four hours or three hours whatever you're going to get the other good thing about it is that we don't have to have anything sticking out of the switch itself so as you can see it's working wirelessly now because the adapter is here rather than being plugged into the switch so we all know that in the past you've been able to connect these things up via a USB cable when you use something like a Magic NS adapter but it means you have to have something sticking out the bottom of the switch or sticking out of the dock with this you don't because you've got the adapter built into here and although it doesn't look as pretty as when it's not on it it does actually work well it doesn't get in your way because it doesn't add any bulk to the back and not many people have long enough fingers where this is going to be interfering with you so it is actually a very good idea to have it built into here instead. Now the other major thing about this which is good is it allows motion control. So with all the other adapters when it comes to the Xbox controllers it don't allow, allow motion control because the Xbox controllers do not have any gyroscopes in them to do the motion control but with this one here it's all built into here so now you will be able to get motion control on any Xbox controller including the Bluetooth one. Remember this adapter will still work with Bluetooth, it's just that you're not going to be using the Bluetooth radio in here, you're just going to be using it on the adapter itself. Now you might be wondering who makes this adapter? Well it's made by Brook and they're the people that made all these super converters over the past few years and you will see these on my other videos, they've been used quite a bit on various videos that I've done and other people as well. So they've been around for a long time now, but this adapter is new out at the moment, so as of when this video is made, you still are gonna probably struggle to get hold of this because it was a Kickstarter campaign, but give it time and over the months you'll start to see these cropping up on Amazon and stuff and I think, I don't know what the price is gonna be, I think it's gonna be around about the 50 UK pounds, might end up being less than that, not too sure about the price, but keep your eye out for it anyway. Bearing in mind, not only is it a wireless adapter, but it is also a rechargeable battery pack as well. So let me just quickly show you the motion controls working, because now that it's all built into here, it means that we don't have to have anything plugged into the switch. So when we're doing our tabletop mode, it's good, because previously, if you were to use maybe the Magic NS adapter via a USB cable, we would have had to have them plugged into the bottom here, and we would have had to place this in a stand. But with this, we don't. So let me just quickly show you the uh, motion controls working. Right, so if you see there now, can you see? And it is also sensitive as well. So look, if I just move it a small bit to the left, it goes a small bit. Move it a lot, and it goes a lot. And obviously, same to the right. Small bit, a lot. Yeah, so there you go, you can see it's working. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna do a complete setup. I've already been using this one here, but I'm gonna do a setup on a complete new one on the Elite controller on a different switch. So you're gonna see what it's like to do it from the very beginning, the same as you doing it out of the box. So in this particular video, I'm hoping to answer all the questions that you think you might have. So let's get started. Let's first of all unbox it. Okay, so in the package we have one adapter and some instructions. So it's very nicely packaged. Just quickly show you the box in case you're wondering what's on it. You can just pause it and look at it in your own time. Right, okay, so here we have the instructions, a couple of stickers as well, and the adapter. Now the battery size in this is 800 milliamp hours, so it's not the biggest battery. They, they reckon that you can get about four hours out of it. 
it says here charging and playing game at same time so it doesn't really matter because you can always just connect up the USB cable and then uh, you just need a micro USB cable so like a standard Android charging cable or your Xbox charging cable or a PlayStation 4 charging cable right okay so what we have to do is if you have a look at the instructions here it tells you pretty much everything you need to know uh, this is it here PlayStation 4 you can see wired wireless it does everything motion sensor vibration and headset support because obviously we can still use the headset feature on for example the uh, Xbox Elite controller you will be able to plug in your headphones there but not on the switch so uh, if you want to watch my other videos then I will be doing them on how to connect it up to the PlayStation as well so we've got the switch here you've got wired wireless we've got motion sensor and vibration but no headset support which is understandable because the switch doesn't allow that uh, PC we've only got its X input and we've only got vibration and Xbox One is wireless, so we can't do wired, and it's uh, vibration and headset support, because obviously there's no games that support motion sensor on the Xbox One. So let's concentrate on the Switch, because that's what we're here to do. So first of all, we need to set it up, we need to put this on to the Elite controller. Okay, so I've got a little Windows 10 laptop here, and basically we need to go onto the Brook website. So the one we need to go to is www.brookaccessory.com forward slash download. And then what we need to do is we need to find the one we're working on. So it's the X1 adapter, this one here. And then you can see here we have an option up top to download it for the PC or the Mac. It's version 1.2 and the date is February 2018. So remember this has just come out here at the moment. So there still might be other glitches that need sorting out. But these are the ones that they've sorted out so far. There you go. So it is always worth just doing the latest update if possible. Because then you know a few issues have already been sorted out. So what you need to do is you need to download it and then you need to unzip it. Which I have already done. Right, and then when you've unzipped it, you're going to have a new file here. And then we just need to click on it up here. And then it's going to allow us to update it. It will come through in about 30 seconds. Right, here we go. So let's just get rid of that background. And it says firmware update. So we need to press this top button here for two seconds. So first of all, let's get it connected up to our Elite controller. So all we have to do is take out this bit here. And then we need to take out the battery pack. We're going to keep these to one side because we're going to need these again in the future if you were to ever sell it or if this went faulty and you need it to just put your original stuff back together. Now basically all we're going to be doing is putting this in here just like it is a cover of a battery. The thing is because we're lining up this here, the male micro USB into the female one, we've got to be careful because it is a very tight fit and when you first of all do it first time you think you might break it but just do it nice and gently but firmly. So look. There you go, can you see it just snaps into place there. And now, a bit of a downside of this is it is hard to get off. Like you can't just do that and expect it to come off. You've got to kind of get your nail under here, like so, and then really force it upwards, and then it comes off here. It actually goes on my Elite controller much better than it does my original Xbox One controller. But the idea is that once it's on, it's going to stay on, because now we're using this as our power supply for the controller and then we're just going to charge it up from the USB port on the top here. So once it's on there's no real need to be taking it off. And that is it. Then what we will do is when it needs charging up all you have to do is get a micro USB lead either from your Xbox or a wall charger or your PlayStation and then when you plug it in here what will happen is it will go to red and that will indicate that it's charging. When it's fully charged it will go to blue. So when that goes to blue it means it's fully charged. Right, all right. so it's asking us to press and hold this one for a couple of seconds until it comes on. There we go. Okay, so it's going blue and red, and it gave a little vibrate. And now we need to put it into, I think it's PlayStation 4 mode, which is going to be the view button here and A until these lights go off. So press and hold the view button and A both together until the lights go out. There we go. And now it's ready for an update. So what we have to do is we have to get a... Uh, the charging cable so I'm using the one that came with the Elite controller it doesn't matter what micro USB cable you use you know you can use one that you've bought for your Xbox or your PlayStation 4 and we're going to plug the other end into here okay let's just go to next oh there it's already recognized it and now it says uh, connect Xbox one adapter to PC well we've done that and now we just got to hit update and now you will see it will go to a nice pink color and if you look at this bit here 
it will slowly fill up and then it will be updated. Do not remove the connector. The light's gone out there now. It's given another little vibrate and now you see it's gone to red because it's charging and it just says here firmware successfully updated. So to connect it up to the Nintendo Switch, we're going to have to do a certain combination of buttons here. Now if you look closely at the instructions, you will see that for the Nintendo Switch, I have to press the View button and B at the same time. And if you have a look at this quick table here, it gives you an idea of what you have to do. So when you're connecting to the PlayStation 4, it would be View and A, Switch, View and B, X input for PC would be View and Y, and Xbox One would be View and X. So what we have to do is, we first of all have to get this working in switch mode so just before we do that we have to change one setting on the switch so go to system settings and then go down to controllers and sensors and you see here you've got pro controller wired communication by default it is off just tap that and get it to turn on it's just going to remind you that it's going to disable the nfc but this hasn't got nfc anyway you can't put an amiibo on here to get the system to recognize it so now we've got that set to on so that's fine now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put this into switch mode. So to put it into switch mode, we're just gonna tap the little button up here, let's call it Brook button, and you can see it turns on. Now to put it into switch mode, we have to hit the view and the B at the same time, because that's what the little table up here tells us to do. So view and B until these lights go out. So keep holding them down, view and B until the lights go out, that's it, that is now in switch mode, okay? So we don't have to do anything else for the moment. Now, we're gonna have to, just for the first time, connect it up with a wired cable. So I'm gonna use the Elite USB cable that I got with the Xbox Elite. Now, normally you would just plug this into your dock and then you would just dock your Nintendo Switch so you can play it in TV mode. But for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna be syncing it all up to the actual Switch tablet itself. Hence the reason I need to use a USB-C on the go cable. But Right, so let's plug that in there like so and now watch this as soon as well it's already turned it on and believe it or not it will be already synced up so if you have a look as soon as I touch one of the buttons you will see it will come up with a pro controller down here there you go yeah so now that's working in wired mode but it won't work in wireless mode we have to set that up so if I unplug that now you can see that it won't do anything let's plug it back in yeah Right now, really easy. To get it into wireless mode, all we've got to do is go down to controllers. And you only have to do this wired version once. Every time now, it will just automatically sync up to your Nintendo Switch, unless obviously, you're, in the meantime, you've been connecting up to your PlayStation 4 or your Xbox, in which case then you're gonna have to go through this process again. But uh, if you're only using it on the Nintendo Switch, then every time you turn your Switch on, you just tap that little Brook button, that top button, button there, and it will automatically sync up. So we're gonna go to Change Grip Order, and we're just gonna unplug this now and unplug this, and we now need to put this into pairing mode. So to put it into pairing mode, we're gonna hold down this button up here, we call it the Brook button, for a couple of seconds, and you will see it will go blue, red, blue, red. So holding it now. Okay, blue, red, blue, red, and now it will recognize it up here. There we go, it says paired, and it's come up there already, and now, for example, if I was to go home, you can see now it's working wirelessly. And that'll be everything. That'll be the motion controls and everything will work. Now, let's go into test input devices and I'm just gonna show you the lag because when I'm playing this, I can't notice any lag at all. It seems definitely as good as the Mayflash Magic NS adapter. So let's go to system settings. We're gonna go down to controllers and sensors and test input devices. Okay, test controller buttons. Now watch this. So I've got the D-pad here. Now, to me, that seems instant. Let's see if I can put that down here so I can use two hands and zoom in. Right, okay. Right, watch this. And obviously, we've got the paddles at the back as well.
Yeah, so you can see it really does seem to be just working straight away. I can't tell the difference between that and the Pro Controller. But there you go, as far as lag's concerned, you can see there doesn't appear to be any. I mean, there has to be some, but not that I can notice. So I don't think you're going to notice it in normal play. Right, okay, so that's uh, that's that one there. Now, I quickly want to see if you can sync up two controllers at the same time. So I'm going to hold it on for a couple of seconds until it goes to the red and blue. There we go. Red, blue, and now hopefully it will sync up with this one here. There we go, paired. So let's just see if we can use both of them at the same time. This has turned itself off. Hold on, let's see if I can turn that one on. Yeah, that's synced up now. So that's one's there. We just go down to test input devices, see if there's lags any different now. We've got two connected. Remember, the button layout is exactly the same as the Pro Controller or the same as the Joy-Con Controller. So remember, this is not B, this is actually A, and this is B, this is Y, and this is X, because it's mimicking the Pro Controller. All right, here we go. No, that seems to be... That seems to be just fine. Right, okay, let's get out of that. I'm just going to show you the analog sticks working, just to show you that they are working as analog sticks. Go up to calibrate control sticks, press in, and you can see now, can you see it moving small little amounts? So it's not working as a D-pad, it is working as an analog stick. So that's full amounts and tiny amounts. Okay, and let's get out of that one. Let's do the same with this one here. Yeah, so you've got the full range there. Okay, let's try the right analog stick. Yeah, exactly the same as well. So two of them are working at the same time. Now let me show you how to do the turbo button. So the easiest way to show the turbo function is just to use the test input screen here. So what we're gonna be doing is hitting a series of buttons here to get the mode enabled. Now it's a bit confusing first time you do it, but you will get your head around it. So all we have to do is hit the view button and the Xbox button together and you will see that this light will go out, the brook light. So I'm gonna tap them and then it goes out. Now we need to decide which button we're doing. So let's say if we want it to do, uh, well let's do B here, which is really A in real life. We're gonna hit the view button and then tap the button we want. And then you've gotta press the menu button to confirm that selection and then press the Xbox button and you see the light will come back on. And now this button here should be turbo. So if we have a look, can you see now? And if you have a look at the light, can you see how much it's flashing? So now if I go to the other buttons, they're not flashing. Yeah, but when I go to this one, it is. Okay, so that might be useful in some games, like maybe like Street Fighter and stuff. And now to cancel that, all we would have to do is press the View button and the Xbox button until that light goes out. And then you're gonna hit the View and Menu at the same time, like that. And then just press the Xbox button to turn the light back on. And now if you have a look, when I hold it down, it's gonna go to the previous screen because that's what it does when you do the test input. So now I have to hit it separately and you can see the light's not flashing anymore. So that's how to disable it. And obviously you can do that on other buttons as well. Now let's say if I want it to do the right trigger. So what I'm gonna do is, just do it quicker this time. These two, turns off, hold that, right trigger, that to confirm, that to turn it all back on again. And now if you look here, you can see the right trigger's doing it. And then to cancel it, these two, these two, Xbox, and now back to normal. And now you can see that Y is working.
Right now, we want to remap the buttons. Let's say, for example, on Mario Kart, I might not want to accelerate here and brake here. I might want to use right trigger as accelerate and left trigger as brake because that's what I'm used to playing on things like Forza 7. And then to drift around the corner, because I just use my one finger up here, if I was to use two, it's fine because I could just use these to do the drift and the power up. But I want to use B to drift around a corner and I want to use A to do the power up. So I need to do a bit of button remapping. So what I'm going to have to do this time is hit these two together. So the Xbox and the menu button and you'll see the light up here will go off. Now I'm going to put right trigger, that's the one I want to start with, I'm going to tap that, and now I'm going to say where I want that to go towards. So I want that now to be, that one you're there, the uh, view, and then B, and then I'm going to hit that to confirm it, and then I'm going to do that to turn it all back on again. And if I was to go to test input devices, you will now see when I do test controller buttons, that if I was to do right trigger, it's actually coming up as A. Yeah, and as well it will give you a flash every time you press it because it's not standard so it's just reminding you it's not standard so now we're going to do the same on here I'm going to show you slowly one more time then just whiz through it so we're going to use these two and then I'm going to use this one here and now I'm going to put that onto this one here so hold this go to there press that to confirm it and that one there to turn it all back on and now when I press that it will be coming up as B Right now I'm going to do the same for these two here, so I can just do this quickly. Right now let me just double check there right before I go into Mario Kart. Okay, so you can see now R and L for these two. And now right trigger is A and left trigger is B. Right, okay, let's go into Mario Kart and check this out. Right, first of all, I just want to make sure I've got motion controls off. So, yeah, that's off. Continue. Now, watch this. That's accelerate. This is going to be brake and reverse. And then this is going to be my power up, which I haven't got at the moment. And then B is going to be the drift around the corners. Yeah. So you might feel much more comfortable playing this game this way. Let me just show you the power up working. Yeah, so you get the idea of it there. And just to quickly show you the motion controls again, uh, let me go to Y, which is X on here. Go to continue. And now look, I'm not used to motion controls, but you see now. Yeah, so you get the idea. Right now, when you turn off your Nintendo Switch, you can still turn it back on and it will be synced up, so you won't have to go through the syncing process again. But remember those button features that we did there? So for example, when I hit this here, you can see that this is now flashing, yeah? That won't happen when I turn it off. The turbo feature and also the remapping of the buttons disappears every time you turn this off. So watch this now. Press this here, go into sleep mode. Yeah. And now when it comes to turn it back on, we can't turn it on from here. We have to turn it on from the switch. So I'm just going to hold down the home button for a couple of seconds. And now all we got to do is tap this button here. And then when it turns on, it will automatically sync up. Yeah. But as you can see, all the buttons are back to normal again. So now I can't use this to accelerate. I have to use this one to accelerate now. So this one's going to be my drift around the corner. So just that, bear that in mind that when it comes to the turbo and the remapping, it keeps disappearing. Right, okay. And let's just see if this one here will sync up automatically. So just tap that one there. Yeah, there we go. So that's synced up as well. But now when I connect this up to my Xbox or my PlayStation, then it's going to lose sync with here again. Right, now let's see how easy it is to reconnect this now. So we've got this one working on here. Let's see how easy it is to connect it up to the original switch that it was working on. So we're going to turn this one on. 
Right, now I won't be able to sync it up with this one here by just pressing and holding this button because the last thing I was synced to was this one here and I still am synced to that one there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the USB method. So I'm going to put that in there and now I'm going to plug that into here and it should automatically start working on here. There we go. Yeah, so that's working on there now as a wired controller. But now we want it working as a wireless controller. So I'm going to unplug that. I'm going to go to change grip order. And now I'm going to press and hold this button for a couple of seconds until it goes into pairing mode. Now let's see if it syncs back up here. Right, it's taken its time, so it looks like it's not going to sync up. No, nope, nothing's happening there. It's, that's uh, taking too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug that. I'm going to basically completely shut down this Nintendo Switch. So press and hold on the power button. I'm going to go to power options, go to power off. And then when it's fully closed down, I'm then just going to turn it back on again and see if it will work then. Right, so it's fully shut down now. So press and hold the power button again. We'll see if it works now. Okay. Okay, so again, I'm just going to use the wired technique just to uh, get it working to begin with. Right, okay, so straight away that's working there. So now I'm going to unplug it. I'm going to go to controllers, change grip order, and now press and hold this for a couple of seconds. There we go. Now let's see if it picks it up. There we go, and now it's picked it up. So, if you're running into any issues, if you start using this on your PlayStation and you come back to your Switch and you can't connect it up, just power down your Switch and then turn it back on again because it looks like it doesn't like going back on it again when it's just been in sleep mode. It looks like you need to power it down to power it back on again. Yeah, and there we go. So now I've got one working on one and one working on the other. Right now, what else do you need to know? Headsets do not work. So, if I was to plug in, a headset into the port here, it makes no difference whatsoever. I do not get any sound coming through here. All the sound is still coming through the Nintendo Switch itself. So plugging in the headset does not make any difference. All that sound's coming through here, unfortunately. Right, screenshots and video. To take screenshots, all we have to do is tap this button up here, and then it will take a screenshot. If we want to do a video, we just got to hold it down for a couple of seconds, and it will say here, unable to take a video right now. Let me just do that again unable to take a video capture now because I need to be in a game to be able to do that. But that's how you do the video and screenshots. Right, I'm gonna do a quick range test just to see what happens. I'm just gonna walk 10 meters away just to see if they keep on working. Right, I'm now about eight or nine meters away and they're still working, so in real terms, you're never really gonna be further from the TV than that. But I'm gonna go into the kitchen now because I know my Joy-Cons always cut out when I go halfway into the kitchen. I just wanna see if it's easy when they cut out to go back on again. Just in case you were to answer the door, take the controller with you and it was to cut out. Right, okay, so they work further than the Joy-Cons, uh, and they have now both completely unsynced themselves. So what happens is when they lose sync, they just basically turn themselves off. So let's now see if they will automatically connect up again when I hit that little brook button up there. Right, so this one's synced back up again, and that one has as well. So right now, I've shown you all the sort of positive points of it. Let me just talk about a few of the negatives. Uh, really, there's not much negatives. It is a good controller. I don't know the final price of it yet. So, uh, you know, is it going to be worth 40 or 50 pounds? Yeah, if you want to use your Elite controller on, for example, your PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch and stuff, I think it is worth that money. Obviously, if you have that money, money's worth different things to different people. Now, I think the negative parts of it are... It's very hard to take this on and off. I know it's probably designed just to stay on a hill all the time, but then if, for example, you want to use your Xbox as a wired controller, then I don't know how many times you're gonna do this before you may cause damage to this, or more importantly, to the actual USB port on the actual 
controller itself so I wouldn't be wanting to take it off for example a hundred or two hundred times because it really is very stiff you know when you take that off there now you can see there let me show you this one here this one was even harder to do earlier right see look there we go it, it feels like it could have issues so let me just sh show you going it back on see it is hard to get back on there you go it's not you know it's not like a nice magnetic fit where it just sort of snugs in there it's uh it doesn't feel great if i'm honest with you but then again the idea is that once it's on it's on let me just see now if it will sync up again once i've actually taken it off yeah it does Okay, yeah, fine. Right, so that's a negative point. The other negative point is the fact there's only 800 milliamp hours. Now, I understand that they've got to fit a lot in here and it's a very small thing, but hopefully if they were to revise this product in the future, they could make it with more oomph behind it and then you're gonna get a lot longer than the four hours out of it. So that would be a plus point, but still it is good that it's a rechargeable battery pack. You know, that's, uh, that's a good idea. And the last thing I can really say which isn't great is the fact that this button here is very hard to press. So for example, when you want to take a picture, it's not just a case of like tapping one of the buttons. You can't just tap that. You have to get your that fingernail in there really, or not your fingernail, but your finger in there and press very hard. Yeah, so does that matter? No, I mean, it was probably done like this so you don't like unsync it by accident because you wouldn't want to be playing and then accidentally hit it against it and it then starts trying to sync up with something. The only problem is, let's say now, if you do want to take a video and you're in the middle of playing Mario Kart, beforehand, you know, on the Pro Controller, you just need to press the capture button for just for like, you know, just a second and then it will do it and it's nice and easy to press. But on here, you're going to be trying to, you know, reach across and you need more effort to press that. I'm not saying it's hard, but it's not like hitting a button, like for example, the uh, capture button. Yeah, it's not just a case of just tapping that. You have to hit it a lot harder to be able to do it. They're the only downsides. Apart from that, I think it's an absolutely fantastic idea. I think it's great that you can now use your Elite controller on different things, especially the PlayStation as well. Now let me just show you it in docked mode, just to show it working on the TV. This is rock and racing off-road. So just pop it in there, get my controller and go up to the screen up here and you will see now that it is working. Of course it's working in docked mode if it's working in handheld mode. Now I haven't actually showed you the vibration working, so this Elite controller is quite quiet when it vibrates, but Hopefully, if I hold it up to the camera, you will just see that as I'm driving around. Let me just put it here, and you, will, you might see that the camera will vibrate as it's vibrated. Now it says vibrating now. And now, so hopefully you will see the camera wobbling. And one other thing I forgot to mention was, you know when I did the... Uh, when I did the, the button remapping. Well, I was just doing one button to another, but you can actually do combo buttons. So let's say, for example, if you wanted to do maybe Street Fighter and there was a certain move that you like doing, then what you could just do is you could map maybe like three buttons to one button. So every time you were to press X here, you could have it mapped to maybe right trigger, down, and then B. And then you see that would be how you would do the combo moves. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it answered most of the questions you've had about the X1 adapter from Brooke. And uh, yeah, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care now. Bye.